Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, I heard there's some folks not here because of the Super Bowl, so I'll bring that up with them later about their priorities. Um, but before I want to get before I get going, I just want to thank um, first our front office staff, Wes Wilcox, you all know, Phil Jabor, Paul Johnson, our, our scouting and analytics crews for um, what really is months of, of work to to go into the the trade deadline. Um, as always, feel prepared. Those guys do a great job, um, and uh, really appreciate them. As you guys know, um, you know we're always active in, in trying to see what's out there, um, but weighing that against um, what we have already here. And um, obviously, this year, um, you know, after exploring those opportunities, um, we, we ended up keeping this group together. So, uh, you know, I think for us, we know the job's never done. We'll continue to vet those opportunities to, um, you know, make our team better. Um, but uh, we're, we're excited for, for what we got going forward. So any questions, uh, we'll go ahead. What's up, sir? Um, just I just saw the release there about Keon Ellis. Can you just kind of maybe describe uh, or talk about just the growth you've seen from him and the decision to elevate him from a two-way player? Yeah, uh, I would say first, first and foremost, testament to to Keon and the work he's put in um, since being an undrafted player. But um, you know, really, our our entire pipeline, you know, started in in the draft process where we identified him as a, a key target who went undrafted. Um, you know, really credit to um, some of our analytics group in particular, Colin uh, Marshall, Zach did a great job to identify him. Then we go to the G League, has a, a great year uh, on his two-way contract last year. Um, our whole development team from Stockton to Sacramento, um, and then gets an opportunity at times this year and um, you know shows that he can hang in the NBA. So we're, we're excited for, for Keon and, and what he's done and what he'll continue to do for us. And then just kind of, you know, going into a trade deadline and just the overall belief that you have in this, in the continuity of this team and, and the, the rotation and this roster. Um, just overall thoughts, maybe just how this season has gone and maybe your thought process as you went into this deadline and then coming out of it without really making some significant uh, move. I think the, the biggest thing is we're, we're always, almost all of our conversations are about uh, as we, you know, really prep for the deadline for, for months is, okay, what, what will this do for our, our team counterbalanced against the cost uh, versus what we what we can do with what we have already in house, and uh, I think I, I complimented our group. I said we're, we have we have a lot of good players. We're accomplishing a lot of good things. We obviously, you know, our goals have not fully been reached, but um, we're in a good spot where we where we can have those conversations. Sometimes the conversations are uh, are much different about what you're trying to do. Um, I think. The West is hard. The West is tough. Uh, it's always tough. It's even tougher this year. I think we're we're on the same win pace as last year when we were the three seed, and now we're I think we're in six or seven right now. So uh, the West is going to be tough. We're going to have to earn it. We got 32 I think games left, um, but uh, if we didn't think that the 17 guys that we got here could could get it done, um, that may have changed what we did. But uh, these guys have shown. Um, you know, dating back to last year and, and this year, some growth, especially on the defensive end, I think it's been exciting for us. Um, you know, we know we got to improve the offense back closer to what it was last year. We do that, we think we make some noise, but we got we got some work to do because the West is, is tough, you know, 1 to 12, 13 this year, and um, every every game is going to be a dogfight. Monty, you uh, back here. Um, you're, 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 I, I was your late. Spot, man. I was late. Um, <laughs> your your words, maintain and improve. Uh, we see the maintain. Do you see the improvement? Uh, and how much did that factor in when you were going into this trade deadline? Yeah, good, good callback. I think, um, like I said, the defense, I do see the improvement. And we, we've done some really good stuff. Um, you know, I think Keegan in particular has taken a step on that end. Um, but I think we're seeing also – this is, I think, maybe one of the benefits of that continuity second year with, with Coach and his system. Um, we, we certainly haven't brought it every night on the defensive end, but overall we, we've, we've seen our rank improve. We've seen some really good performances. Um, that said, we have not maintained our offense, and that's, that's 
an issue. We, we got to get better on that end because if we had maintained our offense and seen the defensive improvement, we'd be in a much different position. So we, we know those things. Um, uh, but yeah, I think the, the improvement has been a positive. Not being able to maintain some other aspects um, is something that we continue to work on and, and need to get better at. And I guess follow up, um, you guys have, if you make the playoffs, uh, your 2024 gets sent to Atlanta. How much did that play into your mind at this deadline that starting July 1st, you might have seven first round picks and sort of your arsenal, your, your stockpile back? Yeah, well, it would it would be it would be six because that one would be would be gone, uh, which would be a good thing. Uh, but yeah, we um, look. I think we've done uh, our group has done a good job of of um, you know using assets when when the time comes, uh, but also weighing that against what we can maybe do with them in the future. So, like you say, we'll have a, a little bit more flexibility with those first round picks. Uh, hopefully, this summer. Um, that's something we'll continue to pursue. Um, you know, but I think we also uh, those those picks, whether it, they can be in trade, but they can also be to continue to supplement what we hope is, you know, a team that can that the core is here to, to go into the second round and and further. And then those picks can be used to continue to keep the train rolling uh, because it's you know, we know with some of the changes in the CBA and things like that. It's going to be you, you got to maintain, uh, you know, your flexibility and ability to to do those things because of how hard it is to operate in certain areas of the cap now. Hey, Monty, two things for you. Um, obviously, ups and downs are going to be the part of any NBA season, but what have you made of the inconsistencies and, and those popping up maybe more than you would like throughout the course of this season? Yeah, I think if we were more consistent, we would be further up the standings for sure. Um, I think the the positive to take from it is for every you know loss that – doesn't feel good that means we've also had some pretty good wins if we're still on the same pace um you know i think we're 12 and 8 against the top 10 these these playoff play-in teams in the west so that's shown that we can do it but uh the nba these days i mean it is there there are some of the records maybe aren't there for teams but th there's no nights off we can't take nights off if we want to get what we want to get and um at the same time we've shown that we can go into some of these on the road in tough places and win. So we know we can reach those heights, which is good to see because those are the teams that are going to be there, uh, hopefully, with us in April, May, and June. So um, it's it's disappointing, of course, um, that we can't seem to do it every single night. Last year, I think we did a great job. I think after our initial start to the season, I don't think we lost more than two games uh, for the bulk of the year in a row. We were able to ride it this year. We've had – maybe some more ups and downs, but it means we've had some ups. If we can continue, like, to, to the question that James asked, um, you know, we can keep our defense there, offense can improve. Same thing with our record. If we can, uh, you know, be, bring it a little more consistently, um, you know, and match those highs, we can contend with those those teams that have, you know, kind of separated themselves from us in the standings. That's where we want to get to. And then in the process of building an eventual contender, what do you feel like is the important things to – attempt to accomplish and, and try to move forward with this season? Well, a big one is is our defense, and, and Coach Brown is, has harped on that. Um, we, we know we got to win the 82 games in the regular season for sure, and the West is going to be tough. And and right now we're I think we're not even in the, the playoffs. I think we're, we're seventh by tiebreaker or something. But so, you know, we know we want to get into the top six first and then hopefully into the top four for home court. At the same time, um, you know, when you get to the playoffs, it's a different game, which we saw last year. Um, I think it's great for our guys to have that experience. Um, we know defensively, I think we did a good job against Golden State, relatively speaking, stepping up our game. That's carried over to this year. But we also – the offenses are, are only getting better. I don't even know what it is. I think the league's up uh, two points as a whole. So I think we're, we're similar to where we were last year, but that's not – the rank's not there because everybody else is getting – getting better and catching up to what maybe we did last year. So we got to find ways to improve. We got target on our back. Teams are going to continue to guard, guard us, um, you know, in ways that they see work in other ways. We're gonna have to adjust and get better, but we get that back up into the, you know, top 10, top five um, with our defensive improvement. That's how we can make some noise. Got two quick. Um, you, you've mentioned the offense a few times. What specifically do you think you need to improve offensively? Where do you see the issues? I think one big one is our pace. We, we were a pretty clear number one last year. 
Uh, this year we've had some really good moments. We, we all know what De'Aaron can do. Um, but we just got to be more consistent of, of – that's one where we can impose our, our will and where our defense should help us. We're number one in defensive rebounding, right? But we got to run off those. We got to be better there. Um, that's a big one. Uh, and I think it's that, that the rest just gets back to the consistency of, you know, we, we've had some highs. We just haven't done it night in, night out like maybe we did last year. Um, but I think we, we've seen some really good improvements. Um, you know, we, we've been a little better. Our shooting in particular has come back. Um, but it's – I think the pace is the number one thing I would point to because that is that is in our control more than shot making or things like that. Kind of a broader league-wide trade deadline question, but how have you seen the dynamics of the market shift now that play in maybe the second apron in the new CBA this year? And did you feel like it was maybe an overpriced market for – buyers yeah i think uh the play-in for sure um has i think given teams more things to work towards not just to make the play-in but it's different to be seven eight versus nine ten you get two chances instead of one it's really important to get in the top six where you're now you're in uh so all those things it used to just be in or out and then maybe home court so um yeah that just gives teams more things where they can't just rest everybody's trying to improve um, I think some of the new the new cap stuff teams were still figuring out uh, how that's going to affect team building not just now but into the future. This has kind of been a transition year um, based on the new CBA. Uh, I think it's good for the league. Most teams are trying to win and compete and get better. Uh, it maybe means some of those more traditional buyer straight buyer straight seller trades aren't there. Um, but uh, we still saw some some movement around the leagues. Different different teams. Uh, felt they needed to do something. I think for us, we're always trying to put ourselves in a spot where um, we're never pressed into something and we get to do it on our own terms. Um, and, you know, credit to our, our medical staff. Again, we haven't been as healthy as last year, but pretty healthy. Uh, you know, our main guys are, are producing. Uh, it's just, you know, we, we think we got enough in, in-house. And um, whether the I don't know. It's hard to, without sitting back, it, uh, I did get some sleep last night, but I haven't really taken a step back and seen what the league, um, you know, has done market wise, but it does seem like there's been just fewer of those straight sellers, uh, team, more teams just trying to improve however they can. Hi, Monty. Um, a couple of questions for you. One, you've talked about the offense defense thing. Um, Obviously, there's, I'm sure, healthy debate like within every organization. Mike has, has really pressed for, for the defensive improvement, saying that to have postseason success, you've got to be, you know, I think in his mind, top 10 defensively. Is that, are, are you guys 100% on, on the same page with, with that part of it? And, and, or is there, you know, maybe some give and take in terms of, of that discussion? I think the, we, we all know we got to be better on both ends because we're not where we need to be. Um, but I think, yeah, the, the defense was, was the easiest thing for us to improve. As we mentioned, we wanted to maintain our offense to get there. And, and right now our offense has slipped as our defense has improved and we're in similar spot. I think maybe the same record to this point as last year. Um, but yeah, I think the, the biggest thing for us is that at the end of the night, we got to have more points than the other team. And uh, especially in the playoffs, you're going to have to go and stop some really, really tough players. I mean, just look up and down the West. I mean, it is – it doesn't matter who you play. You're going to have multi-time All-Stars, All-NBA guys, future Hall of Famers that you're going to have to stop. So, um, yeah, we got to learn to do that because when April and May come, we got to do that. At the same time, we got to figure out, you know, a way to score because – in this league, I mean, it's it's taken 110, 120, 130 to win. So, um, you know, we, we got to do both because we can't have a, a good defensive performance go to waste because we, we can't score enough. So um, it's always a two-way street. I do, I do think the easiest thing that we've seen in the past is to be top 10 offense, defense. That usually gets you in a pretty good spot. But, uh, you know, we saw Denver last year win the title with without a top 10 defense. So um, if you could be special enough on one end, Boston uh, way back – uh, when I started in the league, won it with, with without, I think, a top 10 offense with, with a really good defense. So uh, b both can work. We just got to figure out a way to, um, you know, for us to get out of the five, six, seven grouping. And if we can do both, we can get into that top four. Okay. And um, you look around the league and, and how teams, a lot of teams are built um, right now. Are you, I guess this is kind of two pronged, um, but, but are you, do you, 
do you see a need for for size and length as you guys build this going forward to to add um, that those elements and and um, if you you don't if you're willing to kind of characterize like how close maybe you felt on on you know some of these these deals that, that maybe you discussed with people were you did you feel like something was 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 close I would say the the biggest thing for us, um, for sure, I think if we can add size and length, um, you know that that can make sense for our team. At the same time, we have we have to balance that with what we know has has worked for us offensively, and we know we need you need shooting and spacing in this league, and so we can't sacrifice too much of something like that. For instance, to add that, so um, <clears throat> you know, it's trying to find really find two way guys, guys that can play on offense, guys that can play on defense. Um, and I think Mike's done a great job getting the most out of guys on, on both ends and getting guys there. Um, but we just don't want to solve one problem by, by, you know, kind of pulling our finger out of another problem. So we, we got to find guys that can fit into what Jay uh, and Mike and the offense are, are trying to do while at the same time, you know, we got to find guys that can match up with, with these guys, um, you know, uh, up and down the West. So, um, yeah, I, I don't want to get too much into the, the rumors and all that was out there. We, we were active. We were trying to see what was out there. If there was something that we thought could improve us for a price we were willing to pay, of course we'll do that. Uh, at the same time, you know, we, we've seen, I mentioned Keegan, in, internal growth on that size and length thing. I mean, Ke Keegan's guarded some really impressive players uh, and done, I think, a great job. HB obviously draws – the tough assignment a lot of times Trey Lyles uh, has guarded some of some of the, the big power forwards that, that you got to go against so we, we have guys that can do it uh, and I think we've seen that on the defensive end but we, yeah we don't want to just solve one problem by by hurting somewhere else Monty you guys are 22nd I think in the league in payroll um, is that a function of just where you guys are in your build is it a function of maybe looking forward to some of the contracts that you're going to have to pay uh, whether it be Keegan or De'Aaron down the road. And do you have, I don't know if it's a blank check, but you have the ability to go out and make moves at this deadline and during the summer that maybe would bump you up into closer to the top 10 in, in salary in the league? Yeah, that that hasn't, um, you know, the payroll or whatever hasn't been an issue. I think this year it was a function of what we did in the in the off season where we, we were a room team and, and how we were able to operate in that we talked about the things we were able to accomplish there and you there's there's ways to get a little higher up uh you know used to be you use room you can't get much ahead this year we were able to pop over with um you know trey lyles's bird rights and the room mle and things like that but um that was more of a function of that i do think you know the higher you get it's really going to start handcuffing your ability to to just maneuver and and the there are some very draconian things um that the tax and the aprons will will limit you on so you know for us it's making sure that look if there's something that we can do that puts us you know into contention with and it you know costs assets adds money you know we're able to do that we just got to be able to then maintain that and you know we we it's i think gone are the days of uh you know you just you're just able to you know kind of live wherever you want and do everything you want as a, you know, the, the trades, they start freezing your picks, uh, you know, all sorts of things happen that are just going to make it hard to stay there. So um, for us, we want, we want to be there for a long time. So we, we know, also want to win in the playoffs soon. So we're, we're always counterbalancing those things. But uh, I do think the new rules are going to make it so, um, you know, if you're, if you put yourself in a tough spot and you don't reach where you want to get to, it's going to be hard to take that next step. Uh, and if you do reach it, it may be hard to maintain it. So we're, we're always, you know, these days trying to figure out that balance. I imagine you, you feel you have a pretty good idea of what this team is or, you know, characteristics and what they're capable of. I'm just curious, like, what are you still curious about, if anything, with this, with this roster and maybe one or two question marks you might have uh, with this group? I, uh, Looking ahead, I'm, I'm curious how our, you know, last year we talked about, I think we had seven, eight guys make their playoff debuts. This year, that's not going to be the case. We, we just went and, you know, played a tough seven-game series. So even our newbies have, <laughs> have, have been in that environment now. So I'm, I'm curious to see how the group will respond. Um, at the same time, we got to get there. Um, you know, I think uh, I'm curious 
to see if our if our group can step up and um, you know continue to the defensive improvement and get back to offensively where we want to get to. Um, you know, we've seen certainly last last year for most of the season, especially at the end, we had a great a great kick. Um, and uh, can we do the same thing this year? So. Uh, we've certainly answered some more questions about our team. We've seen them grow together, but still plenty unanswered. And, um, you know, but I think exciting because of some of the things that they've been able to do, like get, gain that play of experience and now see how it is to have a target on your back. With Fox's growth this year, where's your confidence level at in him potentially being a number one on a championship team? And how important is it to, to have that for long-term construction? I'll say, uh, despite what, was voted in. I think we have two all-stars pretty clearly. Um, you know, Deer and Domas have been fantastic. Um, you know, at the same time, everybody, until you, until you do it in the playoffs, that's the ultimate litmus test for a lot of guys. But, um, you know, what, what Deer and Domas have shown, um, you know, last year through the regular season into the playoffs and now this year, um, you know, I think those guys can – can be the focal points of the foundation of what takes us to where we want to go. Um, you know, I think we have other guys that continue to step up and, and grow as well. And that's going to be a big part of it because, um, you know, I think the way that the playoffs are these days, you need to be able to put five guys out there at all times. Um, certainly your top guys are, are going to be called upon more often, but it, it's going to be three, four, five, six, seven, all the way down because matchups and, um, what defenses dictate you do offensively and how, you know, with switching and those things, like it's, it's no longer where one or two guys do everything. So um, those guys, they're going to carry their weight and they've, they've done so. Um, we're going to need the rest of the guys to continue to step up also. Uh, Monty, you touched on the CBA and how you can get handcuffed um, under some of these new provisions. Is there some opportunity here for you guys, given where you're at in your build relative to, other teams that, that might already be, be looking at, at kind of that handcuff situation given, you know, kind of the way their salaries and, and everything else is built already? Yeah, we hope so. Um, you know, I think that that's, uh, you know, one thing that we're always looking at because opportunity now versus opportunity in the future and, um, you know, as, as teams become, you know, less flexible and, uh, more restricted by those things that could be opportunity for us to um, you know to add things or or uh, be in a position where other teams cannot do things that we can do so um, you know I think I think so I hope so and um, you know that's as we continue to to learn and figure out what this new CBA is going to look like I do think we're we're right now in a, a pretty good position to take advantage of a lot of those things and and improve this thing as we're, you know, again, I want to be here for, for many years uh, where we're fighting in the West to, uh, to win multiple rounds. And um, to do that, we have to, we have to balance improving now and, and of course the future. Speaking broadly, I guess, of course, I mean, you, you've been, you know, trying to improve this team for, since going back to the summer um, when it comes down to draft day or excuse me, to, uh, to, to trade deadline, was there much movement that, Surprised you? Didn't surprise you? I mean, did that day happen about as as across the league about as well as you expected? Yeah, I, um, credit to our group. I think we're, you know, we're our information is good. We know what the opportunities are. Uh, generally, what the costs will be. Uh, really well before deadline day, <laughs> the final day. Um, but it's um, you know obvi the exact details maybe obviously aren't known, but. Um, we have a very good sense. This is, you know, as as we kind of got closer and closer, uh, was about what what we expected. And um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, for us, uh, at the end of the day, we we chose mostly to to stand pat. But um, you know, we we knew what was out there. And uh, Wes and Phil, Paul, our whole group, there, we're doing a good job of talking to teams and and trying to figure out what's what's going on and what where opportunities may lie.